It was nothing. Ignore it. Hello and welcome to the Gretchen Report. Today on the Gretchen Report, a brief history on mattress. Yes. Matches. Welcome to the Gradual Report, where we gradually report. The first step in this amazing adventure occurs in the late 1600s, with an alchemist by the name of Hinnigan Brand. Hinnigan Brand. Hinnigan deduced that his pee was yellow, and that gold was also yellow. So if he took his pee and boiled it and threw iron into it, he might turn it into gold. Though his urine did not turn iron into gold, it did start glowing. What he had created was phosphorus. And it was a stinky face. Unfortunately, the 5,500 liters of urine that he reduced could only produce 120 grams of phosphorus. And so it was highly uneconomical. That's so obvious. In roughly about the same time period in 1669, Robert Boyle, of Boyle's law fame in physics, coated a piece of paper with phosphorus in a splinter of wood with sulfur. He then pulled the wood through the paper and the wood ignited into a brilliant flame. Boyle probably said something to the effect of bah, bah, bah. Well then, that's that mystery solved. Tea, anyone? Bah, bah, bah. Let's go play with gas. Bah, bah, bah. I know, personally I would have continued to play with the fire. But Boyle, he was just into gases, who can say? Boyle's favorite fruit? Beans! <laughs> now a quick message from the man in the mask. When the pressure of gas is increased or decreased, the volume of gas changes inversely proportional to it. Example. Beans! Uh-huh! Oh my gosh! Who was that? What did he say? I bet it was important. Now we wait around for 140 plus or minus years. <laughs> Finally, 1826 comes around, and with it, a young chemist named Jonathan Walker, no relation to the whiskey. After stirring together a mixture of chemicals, John Walker removes the stick that he used to stir it and realizes that there is a disgusting substance at the end of the stick. Rubbing that substance onto the ground, it bursts into fire. John probably said, holy fuck! and stamped out the fire at the end of his stick. John quickly realized that he could increase his viability with the females in his dungeon lair if he can convince people that he was an actual wizard. And he took his magic stick on the road. I believe that was a sexual reference of some kind. Seeing one of John's demonstrations, an individual by the name of Samuel Jones decides to patent the idea and create Lucifers, a name that is still in use in the Netherlands. Lucifers, though sold widely, were incredibly unpredictable in their ignition and stunk horribly. Some likened the smell to a goat being shot out of a cannon at a pile of cat poo. So in the interest of improving the product, in the 1830s, Charles Sawyer, a pompous French chemist, added white phosphorus to the mixture, decreasing the stink of the Lucifer and creating the match. What Saria and the rest of the world didn't know was that white phosphorus is actually incredibly poisonous to your kidneys and liver. People were dying everywhere because of matches. Enter the Lidstrom brothers from Schweitzerland. John Everard and Carl Fraar. They started an incredible match factory in... How I pronounce it. I don't care how you pronounce it because that's how I pronounce it. Who cares how you pronounce it? Blah, 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 blah. Diamond factory. Blah, 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 blah. Other people. Blah, 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 blah. The matches you use today. Final summation! I heard about the urine thing when the guy created phosphorus, and I thought, let's do a show about matches. Wonderful little thing, but uh, but according to the terms of my probation and since the, the spaghetti fire of 2007, I'm not allowed to hold matches. Join us again on Friday when we continue our very important work. I love you, and if you believe me, then it's true. <laughs>